Hello guys and gals and welcome. So today we're going to be looking at a, uh, a rather amazing item, specifically uh, made for necromancers, but not only can be used by necromancers. Rather interestingly, it has some other purposes. Um, it is the Death's Web Unearthed Wand. Now, the Death's Web Unearthed Wand has some pretty amazing abilities on it, and as we go over it, you'll start to understand why. So right off the bat, uh, we have a very nice uh, one-handed damage of 22 to 28. And you might be asking, why the hell am I talking about one-handed damage? Well, we'll talk about that later. Uh, we have a strength requirement of 25, and we have a required level of 66. So this is an elite item, which means it cannot be upgraded. And um, it is relatively hard to come by as well, so we'll keep that in mind as we go along. Uh, we have plus two to all skills, and uh, this plus two to all skills is static, which is nice. Um, it is also not nec necromancer skills. I don't know if you notice this, but it is plus two to all, not plus two to necromancer, which is a little strange for a necromancer item. Uh, we also have plus one to two to poison and bone, necromancer only, um, and this will come in handy if you are particularly a poison and bone necromancer. Um, most specifically, a uh, poison explosion or poison nova necromancer, not a poison dagger necromancer, because of course, it's not a dagger, and you can't stab people with it. I mean, you can stab people with a wand, but not in the game. Uh, we have uh, another really nice effect on here of negative 50% to enemy poison resistance. And this is the real money maker on this ability. Um, just a massive amount of negative enemy poison resistance. Now, the unfortunate thing about this is it does vary from negative 40 to negative 50%. Um, so not only does it have a variable on the poison and bone spells, but it also has a variable on the negative poison resistance. But negative 50% enemy poison resistance is freaking huge. And combined with something like lower resistance, which will help you break poison immunities, um, it, it will have a massive effect on the amount of damage that you put out as a poison necromancer and also as a rabies druid ah but you didn't think about that rabies druids um, are specifically about doing massive and massive amounts of poison damage and negative 50 percent enemy poison resistance is a huge boon to the amount of damage that a rabies druid can put out and um, it actually is so good that you can actually use this on a rabies druid um, while you're shapeshifted and just go around biting people with your wand. Yes, bite people with your wand. Uh, we also have uh, plus 12 to mana after each kill, which is a variable of 7 to 12. And we have plus 12 to life after each kill, which is a variable of 7 to 12. Now, the plus life after each kill is not really a big deal, but the plus to mana after each kill is actually pretty huge. 12 to mana after each kill is a lot of mana after each kill. And when you take a look at the mana cost on Poison Nova at 20 per cast... 12 mana back on every single monster's death is a lot back on every monster's death. So if you are a Poison Nova Necromancer, um, you're going to get a lot of good use out of that plus 12 mana after each kill. Now, um, the physical damage actually does matter because if you're using this on a Rabies Druid, you want to have at least a little bit of life steal or mana steal back um, you know, when you chomp on things. So it's nice to have a little bit of physical damage as well. Now, Rabies Druids aren't really about attacking as fast as humanly possible, but um, it is nice that it is a fast attack speed weapon, and if you were to use this on a Rabies Druid, you might socket it with uh, maybe a Shale Rune to attack faster, or maybe just a, um, a Poison Facet for an extra 5% uh, Poison Skill Damage and an extra negative 5% negative enemy resistance. So you have to imagine that if you come across a monster who's 0% Poison Resistance, it's going to boost your damage up by 50%. And... Um, if you come across a monster that's immune to poison and you manage to break it with lower resistance, this will act as a additional negative percent on top of that. So like say for instance a monster had 110% poison resistance and you broke him down to 90% or say, let's say 95%. 95% um, poison resistant is still ridiculously poison resistant and it's going to reduce any damage that you deal by a massive chunk and it's going to take you a really long time to kill this monster. 
Whereas, if you have the negative 50% enemy poison resistance on top of lower resistance, you can reduce that monster down from 95% to 45%. And 45% resistance, poison resistance, is far less than 95. And you will deal at least half of your damage, a little bit more than half of your damage, which is very, very nice. And um, we have to take this over to a poison Nova Necromancer. I think that's really what we need to do. So, um... Let me go take this over. Uh, actually, you know what? I have a rabies druid. Let's take it over to a rabies druid. That'll be fun. Uh, poison over necromancers are boring. Let's go take it to the rabies druid and let him have fun with the death web, shall we? Uh, so my uh, poison, my rabies druid is actually um, rabid wolf pack. There you are. Now, he's actually set up for summoning um, slash rabies, so he's probably not going to be the greatest. Uh, but let's just go ahead and give him his bramble back, and uh, we'll give him death's web. And uh, since he is... I mean, that should be good enough for right now. He doesn't necessarily need a shield at this particular moment, not for running around and biting things. Um, so Death's Web is going to give him some relatively low damage. As you can see, only 85 to uh, 130 on Feral Rage. But if we switch to Rabies, you'll notice we have a nice 17 to 18k Rabies damage. And uh, let's go somewhere like Frigid Highlands and let's see how it works. So despite the fact that we uh, don't really have a massive amount of uh, physical damage here, we should be able to bite one monster and, uh, and kind of just run away and let the uh, poison just kind of work its magic. As you can see, we've already got a couple kills. Poor Eldritch is dead. Not bad at all. Um, the massive amount of negative poison resistance really stacks up with that. And of course, you know, if you were a uh, shapeshifter druid using great beasts, you probably also want to do physical damage at some point, so you would probably want to have something else on your other hand uh, for your physical aspect. And you might swap back and forth between, um, you know, two or three different weapons so that you have um, a physical damage aspect weapon, and then you also have your massive amounts of, uh, of poison damage weapon. But as you can see, I'm running the, um, the Death's Web, and I also have Bramble, which also has poison skill damage on it. I'm also running Tranghouls, which has poison skill damage. Um, so if you're going to do a, um, a, dru a Druid who is using Rabies, um, you're definitely going to want as much poison skill and negative poison resistance as you possibly can. Um, like, for instance... Death's Web. Um, now, Poison Facet would go a long way in this particular item. Uh, that, that extra 5% and the 5% bonus would definitely be a really nice boon. Um, but keep in mind that negative poison resistance is far more valuable than plus skill damage. So effects like the Trangle's Claws with 25% poison skill damage or Ramble with 36% poison skill damage are not going to be as effective if the monster is almost completely immune to your poison and that's why Death's Web is just so amazing for a poison damage character. Um, unfortunately, you can't use this on very many poison damage characters, although that plus the skills is, uh, is, is very nice. Um, I think that when they made this item, they really kind of thought about that. They were, they were thinking about, hey, you know, this could probably be useful on a rabies druid. And so instead of doing plus two necro skills, they did plus two all skills to kind of make it as an option for other characters. And... Um, and it's interesting, to say the least. Um, granted, um, when you're using this on a shapeshifting druid, there are other considerations to take into account. Um, you can't really prop yourself up using lifesteal or mana steel. Um, you do have to use a shield, uh, which will give you plus two more skills, but will also uh, be a detriment. So uh, sh I think shield is converted into faster hit recovery for a, a wolf, and you need to uh, you need to beef up your faster hit recovery as much as possible. But thankfully, Bramble has 50% FHR, so if you're running Bramble and uh, Death's Web together, that's a nice little combo there. Um, as far as this particular um, wand goes, um, we got to look up and see how you find this wand. So uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, treasure class list real quick, and uh, we're going to get an idea of, uh, of what kind of areas this will drop in. So uh, if we go to the treasure class page and we type in uh, Death's Web in the Find All, Death's Web... Dear Lord, boopins. Oh my God, so many boopins. Stop booping. Stop it. Yeah. Here we go. Death's Web. Uh, it is a Q level 74 item and it is a TC class 87 item, which means it's probably not going to drop for much of anything other than 
like Bale in Hell Difficulty, um, elites in the pit, elites in the in ancient tunnels, so forth and so on. Um, you're not going to see it very often from um, from most sources. So it's going to be a particularly rare item that um, that you're not going to find as often. And uh, if you're a poison necromancer or rabies druid and you're really pining for this, um, my uh, advice to you is to go to the Silo Pen uh, website. Uh, if you look it up uh, on Google, it's Silo Pen D2. And Silo Pen will have a drop chance calculator. Uh, and you can put in all the variables and you can basically, um, you know, put the item that you're looking for. Um, so, for instance, uh, we would go to uh, Death's Web. And, um, and we will be able to find out uh, where this item has the highest chance of dropping. And we're going to do this real quick just for fun. So let's, um, let's pull up uh, bosses. Actually, no, let's do super uniques. That's a more interesting one. So find super uniques. So the best probability for super uniques is apparently... Frozenstein? I don't know if I'm reading this correctly. I mean, it looks like Frozenstein, Pindle Skin, Snapchap, Thresh Socket, Achmel the Cursed, Bartok the Bloody, Cleanzo the Annihilator, Lister the Tormentor, Ventar the Unholy, Neelathak, Shark Tooth Slayer, and Doc Farron can all drop the item. Um, as opposed to bosses, it looks like Bale in Hell Difficulty, um, Fetid Defiler in Worldstone Keep Level 1, Fetid Defiler in Worldstone Keep Level 3, uh, Neelathak, Rancid Defiler and Rank Defiler. The Defilers, um, a lot of people don't know this, but the Defilers in Worldstone Keep are extremely high level, um, and they can drop just about every item in the game. They're 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 freaking crazy. I uh, I always tell people whenever they see an Elite Defiler in um, in Worldstone Keep, kill it because Elite Defilers um, literally have a chance to drop everything, and um, it's just like killing Bale basically, um, except you know you don't get guaranteed items from them. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos. And, uh, and if you are a Poison Nova Necro or a uh, Rabies Druid and you're looking for a Death's Web, um, I hope I've given you a little bit of an insight into how useful it could be for your character. And as always, thanks for watching.